is Ethan Sawyer, aka College Essay Guy, and my goal is to bring more ease, joy, and purpose into the college application process. And while I do that through the blog and through my courses and stuff, one of the main ways I do that is through this podcast, the College Essay Guy podcast, where I interview some of the most brilliant minds in the college admissions world, analyze their genius, and break it down for you into practical, actionable steps that you can take if you're applying to college or if you're helping somebody else apply. Campus Pride is the go-to resource for LGBTQ students and their families. And my guest on this episode, civil rights champion Shane Winmeyer, is the one to thank for its very existence. On this episode, we discuss how did Shane get involved in this work in the first place? How is the college search process different for LGBTQ students? What are some great questions to ask when visiting campuses? What are some common mistakes that students make in the process? How can LGBTQ students find scholarships? And should students come out in their essays? And if so, how? Thanks for tuning in. My guest today is Shane Winmeyer. Shane's a best selling author, LGBTQ campus pioneer, and civil rights champion. He's founder and executive director of Campus Pride, the leading national LGBTQ organization for student leaders and campus organizations working to build future leaders and create safer campus communities. Uh, Shane is also the creator of the Campus Pride Index, which we'll put a link to in the show notes. It's the premier national LGBTQ benchmarking tool for colleges and universities. More on that shortly. Uh, Released fall 2006 by Allison Books. Uh, Shane's the author of The Advocate College Guide for LGBT Students, the first ever college guide profiling the 100 best LGBT-friendly campuses. He's also the editor of Brotherhood, Gay Life and College Fraternities, and co-editor of the books Inspiration for LGBT Students and Allies, Out on Fraternity Row, Personal Accounts of Being Gay in a College Fraternity, and Secret Sisters, Stories of Being Lesbian and Bisexual in a College Sorority. Shane, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. Thanks. So I'd love to just hear a little bit more about your story, your background, and how you got into thinking about and writing about college admissions. Sure. Well, I um, am a first-generation college student. I grew up in uh, the Midwest in Kansas in a very small town, and neither my mom or my dad um, uh, you know, went to college. And um, my mother was actually you know, raised me as a single mom for the first year that my dad adopted me. But, um, you know, we grew up on a, you know, near a reservation and I am part American Indian and, um, you know, have a very mixed ancestry and, you know, being a first generation college student and somebody who, you know, uh, comes from a family that, you know, even my grandmother had six, you know, uh, girls and six boys, so about 12 kids, and, you know, not none of the grandchildren had ever went to college. So there was a kind of this immense pressure to, uh, that I put on myself really to, to kind of be the first to go to college. And, um, you know, I think that experience has really changed my life, um, for the better. And, you know, it's been able to, uh, you know, help me help other students. So I think the, you know, the whole aspect of college admissions, getting into college, has always been important to me because it's what, you know, my family um, particularly wanted me to go into college. And, you know, I, I was the first generation student to do so in my family. So it kind of holds something very special to me. And I believe that college admissions is kind of the first impression that students get of a college campus. And, you know, especially for somebody who might be out and LGBTQ or, you know, might be closeted, um, you know, that the college admission process is the way that they go about learning about whether or not they really want to be part of that community. Right. So when it comes to finding a great school, how might the college search process be different for LGBTQ students? Well, I, I think it uh, ha- can be very challenging because we are not always transparent in what we offer LGBTQ students or we don't have much to offer them. And it just depends on, you know, the region of the country, uh, the state, um, whether it's public or private or a two-year college experience or possibly even, you know, historic, uh, historically black college. Uh, there's a lot of differences out there currently in what services there are for LGBTQ students. So in many ways, a, you know, a family member, a parent, an LGBTQ young person has to be able to know what questions to ask uh, to find out the commitment and the 
uh, the institutional support that a college campus has to its LGBTQ students. And so that's the difficulty. It's, it's not as um, easy really to find LGBT campuses as it is maybe to find campuses that are inclusive, you know, for other purposes uh, related to like sports or athletics, um, you know, or, you know, for uh, international students. Um, you can kind of see that and it's more traditional to have that information available. And it's still slowly coming out on the admission side, you know, this information for LGBTQ students is equally as important as, you know, for students of color or for, you know, other aspects of diversity on campus. I'm with you. And one of the things that I love, so I'll be mentioning Campus Pride a bunch, and you know there will be links to the to everything we mentioned in the show show notes. Um, one of the resources that I really love is this personal inventory quiz for LGBTQ youth. It's on the website. Shane, what are some of those questions that you think are really great for LGBTQ students to be thinking about and asking as they're looking for colleges? Well, I think for every LGBTQ student, it's a bit different based on where they grew up or what they're looking for in college. Ultimately, you know, students go to school uh, to get a, you know, a degree in a certain area that they want to spend their life, you know, as a career, or, you know, be able to create change in the world. And that could be an English teacher. That could be, you know, a biomed uh, student who goes on to be a doctor, you know, whatever it is. And so you have to think about it from a standpoint of where you want to go to get your degree. But you also have to think about it from, you know, do you want to have, um, you know, a lot of out students around you? Do you want to have, a, you know, access to clubs and activities that are LGBTQ specific? So I think one of the things that we approach in, in kind of the, the, the idea of the search process for, for students and, and kind of taking a personal inventory of what is important to you as a, a gay, a lesbian, bi, trans, queer person uh, in the experience that you have. For some of us who maybe grew up in the Midwest, you know, we are already accustomed to not having a lot of maybe visibility or out LGBTQ folks. But when I go to college, maybe I do want that as part of my experience. And so it's really about digging deep and trying to figure out um, what you need to be successful, what you need to have your personal um, you know, experiences met along with your academic experiences. Yeah, and what, are, what about when visiting campuses? What are some great questions to be asking or, or things to be looking for as students are seeing if this is a fit for them? Well, first of all, there's no bad question to ask. Um, I think that's important. And, you know, the more questions you ask, I think the better you will feel about the campus visit. So, you know, I encourage students to to ask about, um, especially from current out students. So if you are out and you're going to a campus visit, you know, try to meet some of the other LGBTQ students on campus who are out and ask them. Um, don't always rely on the admissions professional or the, the student who's giving you the tour. Um, you know, try to get to know some people on campus and ask them directly. Um, some of those questions could be, you know, what is it like to, um, to uh, be out? Are there, you know, activities, uh, you know, educational events? Can you openly ask LGBT questions in the classroom? Um, are the professors inclusive in how they treat students? You know, if I'm a trans student, um, you know, you know, asking other trans students, you know, how often have they been, you know, misgendered or maybe, you know, are professors respectful of pronouns and what name you want used in the classroom? Uh, there's just, you know, I, I think the questions ultimately have to come from uh, what you're most concerned about, but also, I mean, Campus Pride provides a whole list of of questions to ask on your 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 campus visit, or you know, of the uh, admissions office or others on campus. Yeah, it's called the campus visit scorecard. So, for students who are getting ready to visit campuses and are trying to figure out what questions to ask, there's a, an amazing huge list. Um, one of the things, another thing, you know, that students maybe don't often consider is college fairs. I know that Campus Pride has a national LGBTQ friendly college fair program. Will you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, our college fair program happens in anywhere from uh, four to eight cities every year. It just depends on which cities um, we have interest. But um, we definitely do uh, fairs that are LGBT-centered and focused. So what that means is that if you show up there, the admissions folks that are there are going to be prepared to answer any question you have about LGBTQ life. So, you know, at a traditional admissions fair, there might be some concern or fear about asking 
you know, certain questions or, you know, the admissions person may not be prepared to answer them. So, you know, we have created a national college for program where the whole focus and the, the experience is centered around LGBTQ life. And so those fairs have become very popular and, you know, the colleges that come there want to recruit and have openly LGBT students. So the parents, family members, and the students, you know, are going to a fair where, you know, they ultimately are the ones that, you know, the campus wants to help, you know, expand this diversity, but also just have a commitment to, you know, LGBT students and making sure that they are part of the student population. So um, it's been it's been going on for now over a decade, and and we um, are very. Um, you know, happy to be able to host these types of fairs. Um, our goal is to host them in more, uh, you know, in more of the Midwest and the South. Um, traditionally, you find that the fairs are in the, in the West Coast or um, in the Northeast. So one of the resources I love is the P's and Q's to choosing the perfect campus. Shane, will you share a little bit about what, what it means to mind your P's and Q's when it comes to this uh, college search process? Yeah, so, um, you know, that's something that we could come up with in just understanding, um, you know, what really goes into finding a perfect campus. Now, a perfect campus is really what's in your mind as far as what your needs are and and what's important to you. But the P's are trying to to picture yourself, for instance, uh, on the campus and envisioning yourself. And I, I truly mean envisioning yourself. So once you've visited, once you've asked the questions, kind of think about, do you fit? How do you picture yourself on the campus? You know, um, you know what's your passion? Is your, is your passion going to be uh, supported there? Um, you know, asking yourself plenty of questions around the campus, um, allowing yourself to be, you know, patient with the process and with, um, you know, trying to figure out uh, where you best fit, um, you know, preparing yourself, uh, for the experience and, and for, uh, you know, college, um, you know, learning about the environment, really probing the environment to understand what it offers, what resources, you know, the LGBT um, work on the campus, do they have a resource center that is fully funded? I mean, that that is real important, but sadly, you know, roughly about 250 colleges in the country have a resource center. So there's a number of colleges out there that don't have resource centers or fully staffed offices that support LGBTQ students. So really probing that, um, you know, have a sense of humor in the process, be quirky and fun as I um, listed here, and then know your priorities. Um, you know, don't forget the reason for going to college is to get an education. And then lastly, you know, we talk about the P of, of pride, you know, be proud of who you are, celebrate who you are. And if it's going to be a campus that isn't going to celebrate or, or recognize you for who you are, then you don't need to be there. Um, people tell me all the time, you know, um, should I be concerned about going to this campus and, you know, talking about, you know, being gay? And I'm, I asked them, I said, is that the type of campus you want to go to if you have to be fearful of that? And the ultimate answer is, well, no, I, I want to be out. Well, if you want to be out, then maybe all these questions you're asking yourself are telling you that you need to maybe pick pick somewhere else, right? And so um, I think the campus truly has to be where you are in your in your process. And minding your P's and Q's helps you kind of dig deep and analyze that. Are there any... Shane, like misconceptions or common mistakes that you see uh, LGBTQ students uh, making throughout this process? Well, I do think it's varied for each student, but I I do hear a lot of times, uh, you know, young people today are coming into college campuses expecting them to be LGBT inclusive uh, and to already be there on maybe gender inclusive housing and and gender inclusive restrooms. and, And the fact is, is that there's still many college campuses that aren't there yet that you know, when it comes to trans inclusion are still far behind or even recognizing, you know, LGB inclusion or understanding what, it, you know, that there are asexual students or, you know, a whole spectrum of sexual and gender identities. Some students come to campus thinking that colleges are these bastion of liberal, progressive, you know, very LGBT inclusive campuses. And while there are some that are definitely uh, more progressive than than some cities and some states, there's a larger number that have a lot of work to be done to even get to a point of being seen as trans inclusive. And so I think that that's one of the big misnomers for, for some of the students that maybe are coming from more, um, you know, maybe progressive cities or urban places 
they expect colleges to be LGBT friendly or even students who are coming from more rural areas, they think that going to college are finally going to be able to, you know, be um, more LGBT uh, out and, you know, have, you know, a, a better way to express themselves uh, in a more holistic manner. And, and while I'd like to think that it gets better just by going to college, that's not really the truth. The truth is, you know, it gets better if you find the right college, the right fit for you. And so this, you know, this notion that just going to college, you know, things are better, I think is a, is a disillusionment for, for many students. You still have to put the work in to find the right college. Yeah. Speaking of which, tell me about, or tell folks about the best of the best college list that Campus Pride put together. What is it and, and how'd you put it together? Yeah, so Campus Pride every year, um, as a way to highlight our programs and our services around LGBTQ benchmarking in higher education, uh, we have our Campus Pride Index, and this index uh, basically rates colleges on how inclusive they are in a number of LGBT uh, policy programs and practice areas. And we, um, once a year, uh, out of that list, uh, pick the top 30. Um, sometimes we've, we've picked you know, the top 25, it it goes back and forth every year as far as how many we um, actually recognize as the best of the best. But these are colleges that are uh, really leading the way, the most progressive of the colleges in the country. Uh, Many of them are are four-year public and private institutions. um, And, you know, they're in many times progressive areas, but, you know, there are some that are in places like Indiana, uh, you know, at Indiana University of Bloomington, which is in a state that maybe isn't quite as progressive. But our goal here is to bring attention to these campuses, but also to recognize that we have a whole list of colleges that are part of the Campus Pride Index that maybe uh, for students who have to stay in state uh, might be also better choices for them because they happen to be in Texas and, you know, I can't afford to go out of state if I'm a Texas student, so I'm going to look within my state. So we do this top, you know, 30 list every year as a way to bring attention back to the Campus Pride Index, as well as to highlight these campuses who are doing positive work in hopes of getting more campuses to kind of strive and to compete with each other uh, to do better LGBT inclusive work. Shane, I'd love to hear a couple examples of what are some of the ways that these schools that are leading the way are being more inclusive, maybe some things that other schools could learn from. No, that's a great question. Um, You know, Campus Pride has roughly about 75 benchmarks, and they range from housing uh, and residence life to recruitment and retention work uh, to academic life to student life. Um, where we've seen most of the work by college campuses is probably not a surprise. We see a lot of work in student life around student organizations, student activities, uh, you know, having a, um, you know, um, you know, events and things going on to even having a resource center or a part-time staff person, right? But truly this, the, the campuses that are leading the way being most progressive, not only are they doing that work, but they have been focusing on trans inclusion uh, and making sure that there is, you know, ways for students who are transgender to be able to get, uh, you know, health insurance as students that's inclusive of gender inclusive, you know, affirmation surgeries or hormone uh, therapies. Um, you know, they're doing work around gender inclusive housing, making sure that if you're a transgender student that you can be housed in accordance with your gender identity. Um, you know, restrooms. Uh, it seems pretty simple to a lot of people, but still, there's many campuses that have, uh, you know, very binary restrooms of just uh, man and woman, and you know, creating family restrooms or gender inclusive single stall restrooms. Not only in academic buildings, but also in recreational sports facilities. So you have single stall showers that are more. Uh, private for someone who maybe identifies as transgender uh, to have access to. So those are the the higher level stuff that many campuses are are doing that are the most progressive and the the best of the best. You know, even simple things like changing your name uh, so you can have the name that you go by uh, on your records for a trans student or making sure the pronouns that you use are already on the class roster. So that way the, the faculty member doesn't misgender you. Those are some examples that, that might, um, you know, that we have seen uh, within the, the best, the best, the top 30. And what's the trans policy clearinghouse? 
Yeah, the Trans Policy Clearinghouse is an online uh, clearinghouse. It's the only one of its kind that looks at higher education, and it's housed on the Campus Pride site. And what it does is it breaks down the policies, many of which I just mentioned around trans inclusion and what campuses actually have them. And it provides you with a way to be able to click on the campus, go directly to that uh, that policy. For instance, um, we list all the campuses that have student employee health insurance that is inclusive of you know trans uh, you know surgeries or trans uh, hormones uh, for therapies. And you can actually click on it, and you can go to that page on the site where it talks about the student health insurance. Um, we also have a number of other questions listed there where you're able to click on them and go and see, such as you know the college campuses that ask about gender identity or sexual identity on the admissions app or the post-enrollment form. Uh, you can click there, and you can go directly to those campuses. And what it does is it provides college is a way to know who else is doing the work and gives them models or, uh, you know, samples to show their administration or to call up the campus and say, hey, I hear you do this. How did you get to that point? And what can we do to, you know, help us get to that point where we have, um, you know, gender inclusive uh, housing on our campus or whatever the trans, you know, policy is that's listed on the site. Let's talk a little bit about money. So I know that LGBTQ students still need to go through the process of filling out their FAFSA or in some cases the CSS profile. And if y'all don't know what those are, don't worry, there will be a link in the show notes. But how can LGBTQ students find scholarships that are particularly for them? You know, I think that asking about scholarships should be part of the college search process. Many colleges actually today are creating scholarships for um, LGBTQ students or even LGBTQ and ally students who have done work in high school or have done work their first year on campus. And it's a way to encourage them to do more work uh, and to, you know, really have pride in that type of diversity on the campus. So asking about scholarships on your admission search is not a bad thing to do. Um, campus Pride also has a Campus Pride scholarship database uh, for students who are looking for scholarships to go to school. So sometimes the, the scholarships are school specific. If you go to the school, then you can apply for them. And then sometimes there's scholarships that are just regional or statewide specific where there's certain foundations or, you know, certain funders that will fund students to go to college. For instance, down in Florida, there's a wonderful foundation called the Gamma Mu Foundation. And they have scholarships, particularly for gay men and uh, bisexual men, to go to school. Um, and they fund anywhere from five hundred to, I think, a thousand, two thousand dollars uh, to help with someone's education. Now, you don't have to go to a school in Florida to get those scholarships. There's also scholarships out of the Pride Foundation up in Washington. So sometimes there's private foundations in addition to individual schools that have scholarships. So you should definitely dig around and think about that. Um, you know, the Point Foundation is a wonderful resource. Um, they only have a limited number of scholarships, uh, and they do fully fund in many ways or, um, you know, scholarships for LGBT young people. Um, but, you know, those are limited. So you need to get out there and you need to start that process early in finding scholarships just like you do for anything else. Right. And I love that colleges can actually add scholarships to the database. So if there are any college side folks listening, know that you can add scholarships to this database. Shane, let's talk about essays, my favorite thing. Um, in terms of, you know, when an LGBTQ student is trying to figure out their topic and they're going, should I come out? Should I not come out? Uh, you know, how do I handle that? What advice do you give them? You know, I think that that is a question that I hope will get simpler um, as, you know, I think it has since I was in, in college, um, which was a long time ago. Um, still today, there are colleges out there that um, are just not inclusive or will not accept someone who's LGBT. Um, those can be found on our website. Um, they actually openly discriminate against LGBT young people. But then those colleges are really in the minority. And ultimately, if I'm gay or uh, trans, I don't want to be stuck on those campuses anyway, right? So then you have campuses in the middle that want to be LGBT friendly or want to be seen as LGBT friendly, they just haven't quite got there yet. 
They're still working on their programs and policies. And then you have a number of campuses that is growing that are LGBT friendly or have a number of programs and services. And, you know, they want to have out LGBT students. And so when it comes to the college essay, you know, if I'm out and I'm queer and proud and I'm going to want to write about what I want to write about. And if it happens to be, you know, a story around coming out as, as, you know, trans or bi in high school or maybe an experience I had that, that talks about my sexuality, then I encourage students to do that. Ultimately, if you don't get into that college uh, because of something you wrote about related to your identity, then in some ways, I think that that is good for you because then you don't have to deal with the, the bias or prejudice or harassment. There are people on the other side of things who would say, well, you know, I just want to get into the best college. And so I'm worried that if I write about it, it will keep me from getting in there. Well, typically those, those elite colleges that you're thinking about, they want to have LGBT people. Um, there's, I would say, you know, if we're talking about the Ivy League schools, if we're talking about higher level, um, you know, uh, research institutions, they are pretty much, if you're going to write about being LGBT, um, most of those campuses, not all of them, you know, want to include LGBT young people. Um, I don't think that, you know, for many of them, being LGBT is going to be a plus or a minus. It's just going to be judged based on what you write about in your essay. I also think that young people who are queer shouldn't think that writing about being queer is automatically going to get them in. I think that, you know, the campus is going to look at it on a, you know, a basis of your merit and your scholarship and your essay is just a component to that. So that's kind of where I stand on it. Um, and I, I think that that has evolved um, from five years ago and what I might have said, you know, five years ago. Um, there's so much on the Campus Pride website, and I can imagine a student getting there and just being overwhelmed, but with where to start. So where would you point folks to start first? Yeah, well, you know, one of the things that we did, because the Campus Pride website, um, it does have a lot of resources and a lot of valuable resources to dig around on. Uh, and to get through, um, what we did was we actually created a, a portal where you can go directly through a URL to learn about, um, you know, kind of a college guide of sorts. And uh, that college guide, um, if you go to that page, it basically takes resources that you would need on your college search from the P's and Q's that we talked about, uh, that, that uh, worksheet to, you know, the personal inventory quiz. Uh, to the scorecard for your campus visit, and it puts it in one, uh, you know, area of the site. So that way, you as a parent, family member, or a new student that's looking to go to college, um, you know, you can actually engage there on that page. It makes it real easy for you. So that's where I would go if I'm looking for colleges, uh, want to start on the process. We have really kind of created this alternate college guide online at campuspride.org, so you can check it out. When students are writing about gender or sexuality or identity, in your experience, what have you seen that works well in the essay and what have you seen that works less well? You know, I think what works well if you are writing about, you know, your um, your sexual identity or gender identity in your essay is just keeping it very, um, very real, very authentic. I think you have to come across as genuine and authentic. In your essay, you have to share it in a way that is meaningful and, and talks about, you know, why it's important to you or why it's part of your passion your, or your whole self. And I think that's what comes across as, as really um, real and, and um, something that's valuable for the admissions folks, for the people making the decision to understand about you. And, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, they want to pick, you know, applicants that... Um, will be um, part of their campus fabric and their the, the, dy- the dynamics of uh, diversity and the type of students they want to succeed academically. Shane, what do you want LGBTQ students to know as they go through this process? You know, I think it's most important for an LGBTQ student to, uh, to know uh, throughout the process of finding a college is that their needs matter, uh, who they are matters, um, at the end of the day, you will be successful because you are being authentic with yourself. You are exploring your needs. And this is a part of your journey, uh, colleges. And ultimately, 
It should make you uh, happy. It should make you feel included and welcome. So you can, you know, for some LGBTQ students, you want to process and you want to to um, have college be about exploring your queerness and your identity. For other LGBTQ students, you want to have the safety and the inclusion to feel like you can learn about other things other than your sexual or gender identity. You want to grow in other ways. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you are what matters and you do, um, you do have a, uh, an important role to play uh, within whatever college you, you find yourself. Um, and for some of those students, that's making the campus better. Uh, for some students, it's about, you know, being part of a campus that, you know, is already pretty LGBT inclusive and, you know, that they are able to kind of explore in different ways. So find yourself and realize that it's ultimately up to you and what you choose, um, you know, for you to be part of that journey uh, in, in the future for yourself. Shane, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hi, friends. Thanks for listening. No need to rewind to find those resources because they're all conveniently linked for you on the show notes page, which you can find at collegeessayguide.com slash podcast. In my next episode, you'll get a sneak peek at what it's really like inside an admissions office when I interview the great Katie Sweeney, formerly of Reed College. You'll learn things like why your admission counselor's office is a rental car for several months of the year. How does the reading application process really work? And even one of the kindest questions you can ask them in an interview. Have an awesome week.